Texas size steps to take before that dream comes true. It's one of the premier matchups of the season in the NCAA Women's Tournament presented by Orbitz. This afternoon, number two, Oklahoma, number three, Stanford, clashing big time. The road to San Antonio, Oklahoma whipping Pepperdine at BYU. Stanford rolled a pair of easy wins in Denver. The winner faces top seed LSU here on Monday night. The Lady Tigers ousting DePaul earlier today to Star Watch now. And it's truly a Star Watch, Andy, when you're talking about Candace Wiggins and Courtney Paris. Both these players coming off 30-point games in their final games. And you see the 32 double doubles by Courtney Paris. No other freshman we've seen can do what she does. And Candace Wiggins, two-time player of the year, national freshman player of the year. Courtney Paris, a chance to do that. Great matchups. It's not just those two. Brooke Smith is outstanding at 6-3 for Stanford, 17 a game. And Courtney Paris doesn't get a ton of help on the offensive end, but Leanne Rush is chipping in with about 10 points per game. As you look at the starting lineups, Dave O'Brien along with Hall of Famer Ann Myers. Beth Bowen's with us as well. And Ann, it is just so rare that you see two stars of this caliber in the tournament like Wiggins and Paris going toe-to-toe -to -toe in a game like this. You do, and they are star players, and you look to see those star players step up their game and play in this kind of game. But Courtney Paris, or Courtney Paris has done it all season long. I have not seen a player do the things that she has done in the women's game at this young. All right, we've been looking forward to this one all day. LSU and DePaul, sort of the appetizer. It is brought to you in stunning high definition from San Antonio, Texas, and a pleasure to be with you. Our officials, Michael Price, Lisa Jones, and Charles Gonzalez. They're going to have their hands full in this one because we expect to see plenty of physical play on the interior. You may notice that the Stanford tree, their mascot is not here, famously suspended for an incident. But the Cardinal is here in force and winning the opening tip. Stanford has it and the first crack at it. Stanford at 25 and 7, Oklahoma at 31 and 4. Oklahoma has not lost a game since early January. They have won 19 consecutive games. Tara Vandeveer, in her 20th season at the helm for Stanford, one of the winningest active coaches, game the ninth Division I coach to reach 650 wins back in February. Over 500 of those wins at Stanford. Rosalind Gold on Wude with the basketball off to Smith. And she'll fire it. And Gold on Wude knocks it down. Gold on Wude starting at that point position. Took over for Candace Wiggins. The first 17 games, Candace Wiggins started at that point guard position. And then the freshman, Gold on Wude, took her place. It's really helped Wiggins kind of settle down. Welch backing in, turns and fires and left it short. Wiggins up with a rebound, but Smith, Brooks Smith, hauled it in. She gets about seven rebounds a game. And she might be a huge factor in how well Courtney Paris does here today in San Antonio. Nice catch underneath, and it's Kristen Newland, the 6'5 freshman with the basket. Tara Vanderbeer told us at practice yesterday that she said it's going to be the role players that really make the difference. She has started Kristen Newland in the tournament because she likes her size. The 6'5 junior really adds a different dimension, and now you've got Leah Rush having to defend 6'5. Now they've seen the switch. Rush now is on Brooke Smith, and now you see Ashley Paris on Newland. Hold on, Rude, trying to get free. Courtney Paris. It's Smith, and she got it. And an excellent start here for Stanford, racing out to a 7-0 lead over Oklahoma. So with Smith and Newland in the game, it gives you that high-low ability, and Brooke is very good for Smith as far as not only facing the basket and taking the ball away from the lane, but also posting up. Gold on Rude stepping back for a long one. Not there with the three, and the rebound hauled in by Leah Rush. Probably a little bit of quick shot. Welch inside to Paris. Can't get it to go. Fights for the rebound. It'll go the other way. Stanford will have it. On top, 7 to nothing. Brooke Smith getting involved early. Brooke Smith, only a junior, transferred out of Duke. And you see her at the mid post. That's a great shot for her. Facing up. That's one of the things that Cara Vanderveer said that she's so effective is away from the basket. There she is away from the basket outside the three. It's kicked. 17.44 left here in the first half as we give you a look at Sherry Cole, the winningest coach in the program's history at Oklahoma. The 41-year-old Cole helping turn our ESPN colleague Stacy Dales into an All-American.
second. She's taken Oklahoma to the 2002 Final Four, but trying to find an answer for the Cardinal early on as Stanford leads it seven, a nine to nothing now. Certainly that's huge for Stanford. One of the things that Carl Vanderbilt talked about is that we've got to make shots. And if you can get off quick, it just gives you a lot of confidence. Brown gives it up to Rush. Looking for some help now. Higgins, very dangerous beyond the three-point line. Gets it to Courtney Paris. Nice drive there. And Rush, the beneficiary. This is an Oklahoma team that has seen a lot of defenses thrown at them because of what Courtney Paris can do. There she shows you her ability to pass the ball. She really sees double teams and triple teams coming at her. Wiggins, talk about triple teams. Out to Rappahan. Got it. Krista Rappahan, a consistent three-point shooter. In fact, Stanford's new school record holder for three-pointers in a season. Look at answer on the other end. Higgins would come up short, but a good follow for two. And there's the bucket by Courtney Paris, averaging 22 points, 15 rebounds per game in a phenomenal freshman season. It's amazing that she's had five games of 30 points or more, five games of 20 rebounds or more. And 27 consecutive double-doubles. Well-run play there for Brooke Smith as she lays it in to make it 14 to 4. Smith with four points. You've got that kind of size inside for Stanford. It just really opens things up. And again, can't say enough about Smith and her ability to put the ball on the floor. The pull-up pop by Brown won't go. Brittany Brown with a miss. And Brittany Brown has been playing very, very well. Had 10 assists in her last game against BYU. Wiggins launches. Got it! Nothing but net, and look at the emotion from Candace Wiggins, the All-American. Oklahoma has to take a timeout. 17 to four, and the Cardinal comes out firing. Everybody's shooting the ball well for the Stanford Cardinal. Four lead over the number two seed Oklahoma here. Stanford seven out of eight and Wiggins starting to heat up. I'd mentioned the first eight games actually she started out at point guard is averaging over 17 a game. Then they switched her to the two and she was averaging almost 26 points a game. It really takes a lot of pressure off her when she doesn't have to handle the ball. But she's capable of doing that at the end of game situation. Stanford eight trips down the court. They've scored on seven of them. Their 19th consecutive tournament appearance. And they have Sherry Cole and the Sooners on the run right now. Early 17 to 4 Stanford. Unless you're the Oklahoma Sooners in the first four and a half minutes. Stanford pummeling them at the moment 17 to 4. Candace Wiggins and Courtney Paris. We talked about the two biggest stars in a game loaded with stars. We bring in Beth Mowens and Beth, this is not the first time, not by a long shot, these two have become acquainted with one another. No, in fact, they, they're they still just teenagers, but this is already their third postseason meeting. They played against each other twice during the California State Tournament in high school, both players winning one of those matchups. And then this past summer, they were teammates for the United States on the U-19 World Championship team where they both averaged in double-figure scoring. They talk with a great deal of respect for each other's games, how they play with a lot of poise, and they play like they're having a lot of fun out there. And, Annie, there's already speculation that they may be teammates again in the near future with the U.S. Olympic team. There is such young talent out for the USA basketball team. I don't know who's going to make it, especially in 2012. Paris, double team, had to give it up and did so to Brittany Brown. She thought about a three. Here's Welch with a pull-up and a two-pointer to go. Six points, that's all so far for Oklahoma Stanford is at every starter score in the contest so far. Coming out of that timeout, Oklahoma going into that zone and Ashley Harris being inserted into the lineup. Wiggins with a long-range miss. But a fast start here for the Cardinal, 19 to six. Oklahoma will retain possession, 14.25 to play here in the first half. Courtney Paris getting a whole lot of attention. Terrific young lady. You see what she's done in an unprecedented freshman year. Almost overnight, she's become one of the key faces of women's college basketball. Well, it's remarkable. And a lot of people have talked about Candace Parker over at Tennessee, but the one thing about Courtney Paris, Oklahoma was nowhere to be seen last year, basically. And this year, to come on like they have onto the scene with Courtney and Ashley Paris, but Courtney just dominating the game. Got in close, her sister Ashley picking off the rebound. Back inside to her identical twin, but a miss there. 
And of course, both of them, the daughters of Bubba Paris, an all pro for the San Francisco 49ers. And they see the Mother Lynn basically raised them, cooked all those meals for those five kids, and uh, played basketball in the kitchen. Well, on today, can't get that one to go. But Stanford crashing the glass. Oklahoma comes away with it, however. Brittany Brown, they have numbers three on two, the drive and the miss. And Rappahan yanking down the rebound. The Cardinal, the number three seed, they can quickly strike, but Wiggins can't get the roll in. Candace Wiggins, the 5'11 sophomore, two-time Pac-10 player of the year. The pace really heating up. Welch can't connect. Roll on Uday, driving in. Outside to Rappahan. Got it. You leave her open. She'll do that all day long. Rappahan is the school record as far as threes made. Was at 85, broke Vanessa Nygaard's record. Now she's got 87. 22 to 6, a nightmarish start for Sherry Cole in Oklahoma. You see all the attention that Paris gets to her sister Ashley now. Courtney. Now Brown trying to get it into the star. Paris backing down. Missed it, followed it, got it back up, missed that. A third effort, got that one to go. And that's where I compare it to Moses Malone. Moses Malone didn't make all every shot that he took the first time he got it. But the relentlessness of getting the rebounds, Courtney Paris missing some of those shots, and a lot of that has to do with Kristen Newland at 6'5. Brooks Smith, a sweet shot there, the 6'3 human biology major. She can also shoot the hook shot, which is a rarity in the men's and the women's game. Her uh, nickname has become Brook the Hook, and she does it with either hand efficiently. Brown, yes, with a three-pointer for Brittany Brown. A 5'8 junior, averaging about seven points a game. Her dad, by the way, a Big 12 Conference football official. And Sherry Cole has said, basically, Brittany Brown has embraced the leadership role. It's been huge for them. Wiggins misfires. Newland also couldn't get it to go. And it's out of bounds off of Stanford. But the board work pretty relentless. You saw Courtney Paris on the other end. Once, twice, three times before she got it to go down. And the Sooners are battling here in San Antonio. And out in front of Oklahoma 24 to 11. This year marks the 25th anniversary of the NCAA Women's Championship. And to celebrate, we're counting down the top 25 moments through the game, the title game on April 4th. Time now to spotlight moment number six, brought to you by Singular. In an upset for the ages, Harvard's Allison Feaster scored 35 points and pulled down 13 rebounds to carry the Crimson past mighty Stanford. The outcome still stands as a singular landmark on the basketball landscape. The first win ever by a number 16 seed over a number one seed. Obviously not a great day for Stanford and for the Stanford tree. These are particularly trying times and Tommy Leaf who wears the tree. He's the mascot ejected during the first couple of rounds there in Denver for dancing in an undesignated area. Of course earlier they had a Stanford tree getting in all sorts of trouble for dancing while intoxicated. That one from the top of the key a three pointer by Brittany Brown and here come the Sooners. Also a few years ago if you look the Georgia Bulldogs they had their stuffed animal all over the court that delayed the game and they outlawed the Tennessee mascot. Smith traveling before she could fire that rolling hook shot and Oklahoma has closed it to them 10 and looking for more. The oh. Sooners, Annie getting by Pepperdine pretty easily in round one, 78 to 66. Then ripping BYU, 86 to 70 in round two to get here to San Antonio. The thing that's amazing about Oklahoma, they're basically a very young team, and the poise that they have, and that's one thing Sherry Cole talks about all year long, is the maturity and handling difficult situations. They had a great win against Baylor in overtime. Rafa hands three, not this time, and it's Paris with a wild outlet. Nobody watching on the play. That was intended for Laura Andrews. She had turned her back and gone to the offensive zone. And the pass wound up getting picked off. So 10.43 remaining here in the first half. Let's go to Beth Mullins. Well, in that last uh, huddle, Sherry call, Cole calling for some of that poise right now. She said, hey, we're not in a big hurry right now. 
We need to just stick to our game plan and chip away at this lead. Stanford shooting can't last, and it's already dropped from 80% down to 60% despite that last bucket. But she wants them to bring much more heat on the defensive end. Yeah, before practice yesterday, she told us we want ball pressure on Stanford. We gotta keep, keep them out of their rhythm. They're a rhythm type shooting team, and so we gotta mix up their defenses. Harris lost it in the teeth of that double team, deflected and stolen, 26 to 14. This is Stanford's 19th consecutive tournament appearance, all time at 45 and 17. Twice they've won the national title. Trying to go to their seventh final four and 11th Elite Eight appearance. Oklahoma, as Kendra Moore can't believe the call here. You see, they change it. And indeed, the call will stand. 10 03 remaining in the first half. And so Stanford the inbound. And a breather here for Courtney Paris, the 220-pound freshman. And a good substitution by Tara Vanderbilt, too, taking Newland out. Obviously, Newland has come in. She's going to play physical against Courtney Paris. And now you go into a small lineup with Stanford. Smith off the inbound, trying to get around Ashley Paris. And drawing contact and a foul. She and her sister both parade and McDonald's All-Americas. Ashley Paris, by the way, earning 10 All-America honors in high school in her own right. Sherry Cole said that if we hadn't signed Courtney, Ashley would probably be the best post player we've had here in nine years. Well, it's surprising to me that coaches today do not recruit twins because that other half certainly makes you that much better, not just on the court, but in the classroom, socially, just having that comfort zone. The Stanford men, by the way, for next year have recruited and signed a scholarships. A pair of twins. They play for the Cardinal on the men's side as Smith knocks it down. Brooke Smith. To make it 27 to 14 Stanford. Under 10 minutes to play in the first half. And they're back up to 61%. So the Cardinal really isn't cooling off yet. And a lot of it's not on the inside. They're taking some outside shots. Aaron Higgins. 5'9", Jr., an outstanding three-point threat, misses there. Courtney Paris remaining on the bench, Smith working on Ashley, laid it up, missed it. What a pretty move, though, that up and under and that one step like that. Kurt Smith has a lot of skills around the basket. She had 22 points, 13 rebounds against Florida State in a round two victory. So she can do a lot of things for the Cardinals. The number three seed getting the best of the number two seed at the moment. Brown denied by Brooke Smith. On the drive, Andrews, and they got the bucket. Good strike for the Sooners. What a nice move by Ashley Paris. Again, a tough pass to handle. Shows you what good hands both Courtney and Ashley have. Rappahan looking inside. Goal on Rude started. Archbishop Malloy high in New York. Yep. Oklahoma had started out in that man-to-man -man defense, now dropped him in that zone. Harmon, a nice little jump shot there from Jillian Harmon. Started 25 games this season. Top 10 all-freshman team and just had been starting, but Sarah Vanderveer decided to go with the bigger lineup. The layup won't go by Ashley Paris from close range. 29-16 Stanford. It certainly helps to control the tempo of the game when you can knock shots down early. And the Stanford shooting this kind of percentage the first half, it helps. Higgins on the deck will lay it up and in for Oklahoma. An experienced, tested team before the all-world player in Courtney Paris was at it. But Higgins, one of three returning starters from last season. We've been talking a lot about Courtney, but Sister Ashley also a member of the Good Hands team. But just a nice drive right here by Oklahoma, and Ashley Paris turning the other way, and a little bit smaller than Courtney, and then down low. Look at the little lofty shot by Harmon. Only a freshman for Stanford. Averaging nine points, five rebounds a game out of Lake Oswego, Oregon. So Stanford to check in. Wiggins has been pretty quiet here in the first half. Although she does have seven points, three out of seven from the field. Oklahoma trying to turn this into a basket as Rush gives it off to Brown. Leah Rush 
fine defender, not relying on the score a whole lot, but she does get about 10 points a game. Brittany Perez walking with it. Yeah, a couple of those feet. The, the double team Dave came over so quick, she didn't know what hit her. How is that not a foul, Sherry Cole says. The travel came first, according to the men in stripes. 7.40 left in the first half. For the Stanford Cardinal NCAA Women's Basketball Championship presented by Orbitz. Annie Myers, Dave O'Brien, Beth Mullins with you. Stanford got out the 19-4 lead since then. Oklahoma's closed the gap, but tough sledding for Courtney Paris. Talk about the different defenses that have played against Courtney Paris and down low. Stanford just sagging in, sagging in, and you see Curl Newland at 6-5 and Brooke Smith helping out. Doesn't get position. Sherry Cole wanted a contact call, but off the turn, that double team is coming so quick on him. Brooke Smith. That bounce pass will sail on out of bounds. It's back over to Oklahoma. Courtney Paris, by the way, is two out of eight with three turnovers here in the first half. Stanford, though, reputation as a terrific offensive team, well-earned, one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country, score a lot of points. They have defended Courtney Paris so well today. It's early. It is early. <laughs> and she is a tremendous talent. Another double team, but again, another miss. Candace Wiggins out of there with it. Again, Wiggins with only seven points, came in averaging 21 a game. She was an All-American as a freshman at Stanford when she averaged 17, really exploding on the scene. One of the truly great players in the tournament. Goes right, pulls up, and it's not there for her. Stanford's cooled down a little bit. Courtney Paris has scored double figures every game this year. Courtney again with Wiggins helping on the double team, and that forces another turnover here. The possession arrow will keep it on this end, so they will retain it. Now you just see Brooks Smith facing up. They're just firing from the outside. Rappahan from the outside. Wiggins from the outside. They've gotten a few in the lane, but it's been from the outside, and that's one thing for our manager said. They've got to knock down the open shots. Ashley Barris knocks down her open shot. She created that herself, the 6'3 freshman. Courtney is actually the younger of the Paris sisters by two minutes. But Ashley is an inch taller of the siblings. Wiggins off the front rim. She's missed the last three shots. Three out of ten so far for Candace Wiggins. And now it's become a nine-point game, although sloppy play by Leah Rush to throw it out of bounds with six minutes to go in the half. The 2006 NCAA Women's Championship presented by Orbitz continues tonight with both Albuquerque Regional Semis. First at nine, ESPN We've got the defending champion, number three, Baylor, taking on number two, Maryland. Then at 11, it's Boston College against Utah. That's number eight against number five. Rappahan on target. Nine points per game, but 43% from three-point range. Brown can't answer. It's loose on the deck. Brooke Smith looking for a timeout, but they call another tie-up first. And that will be Stanford ball. So Tara Vanderbilt probably delighted the timeout was not taken there. Stanford 47% shooting, 40% Beth Mullins from the three-point line. And Rappahan really a great weapon for them there. Well, she has gone from scout team player to star this year for Stanford, setting the new single season record. She's hit more three-pointers this year than in her first three seasons combined. And she's so excited just be, to be able to be herself. She's usually on the scout team pretending to be Ann Strother or Lori Kane or Lindsey Bowen. And this year she gets to be Rappahan, and she's a weapon for Stanford. Her goal every game coming in is to shoot 50% from three-point range and she takes 100 three-pointers almost every day. Her mom coached her. So that hard work and preparation, she's just got a great attitude to score. 85 three-pointers made this season. Jamie Carey, who later finished up at the Rage of at Texas, had 81 to set the single-season record. And only played the one season at Stanford. Oh, nice fly. Oklahoma on the attack. Quick strike by Brittany Brown. 34 to 22, eight points for Brittany. 
And look at the trap, as we talked about, Sherry Cole kind of mixing things up, changing the tempo, trying to get Stanford out of their rhythm. Wiggins again off target. She's three out of 11, but the follow is up and good. And it's been the secondary players, the, the so-called non-stars, who are making all the difference in this one. And just even on that rebound, Brooke Smith showing the versatility of using either hand off the rebound, using that left hand. A lot of players right-handed would go back up right-handed. Brown inside for Courtney Perry. Look at how tight the double team is. She can't get free, and indeed it will be. That's the call. Another turnover. And Sherry Cole has to find another answer because Courtney Paris is drawing all sorts of attention every time she touches the ball. Nine. Wiggins, three out of 11. So, so much for Star Watch there because it has been everybody else, including Brooke Smith, who has the ball now, working on Courtney Paris outside of Wiggins. She drives in and got that roll, and that's her game, Candace Wiggins. The versatility of Candace Wiggins to be able to handle the ball, be able to drive, to shoot the threes, to get to the free throw line, to rebound. And Erin Higgins has been huge for Oklahoma. She's knocked down some shots. We talked about Rappahan hitting threes. Higgins also has the ability to knock down the three. Another one to go, Rappahan. We've been talking about her throughout this contest back in November. She broke her nose. That's the reason she's continuously wearing that face guard. But a young lady who hits 43% from beyond that line. Took about six per game, and now both sides are starting to knock down a lot of shots, Annie. We talked about Leah Rush as far as, you know, her defensive ability and what she does on this team, but she has to score points for them. She averages double figures, but she's got to look to score. Smith lost it. Taken away by Ashley Paris. Now Brown will feed inside. Sister to sister, but a miss there by Ashley. And one here. Count that shot, and she'll go to the line. A one-on-one -on -one situation because Stanford is too slow getting back on the transition defense. When Oklahoma can rebound, Stanford's going to miss a shot. They come down very quickly. And look at it. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation. All of a sudden, there's Ashley Paris on the other side. And Courtney and Ashley, when you're sisters or you grow up playing together, brothers, sisters, cousins, uncles, you know how to play with each other. You know where that person's going to be on the floor. Courtney in and out with that free throw. And as good as Courtney Paris is, Sherry Cole says, I can give you a laundry list of the things that Courtney Paris has to improve on. Certainly free throw shooting is one of them. But broke the Big 12 single season rebounding mark by over 100. Just a terror on the glass. The jump shot is good, and it shows you some of the range of Brooke Smith as well. Not only inside with that hook shot, but she can back out there and hit that 10 to 12 footer. And good patience by Newland. She had a one-on-one. -on -one. Does she go and drive? She does. As soon as she goes to the middle, the weak side defense drops off, and she's able to pass. But on the other side, look at the, you see the three players by Oklahoma up top here, and Sanford is going to sag down in the middle against Courtney Paris. But look at how the Stanford players are all in the middle here, and now you've got open players up top by Oklahoma. You see the double team, and it's very difficult for Courtney Paris to go anywhere. Shot clock at 10. Brittany Brown. Using that screen, trying to get three, three seconds to shoot. They get it low to Paris, and she knocks it down. Well, once Courtney Paris can figure out the double team, how quick it's going to get, that time she had room to maneuver also. Stanford was real slow getting there, but just a great shot by Paris that time. Paris sisters growing up as well with four brothers. Scoring on three players on that one possession with people hanging all over her. Harmon is wide open. The tip up by Newland, but she's going to get hit with a foul, pushing off to get free. Let's go back to court. Courtney Paris here on the other end. A difference in their game, too. You look at the banging going down by Chris Nolan, and there's the double team, and you look bumped by Smith. But the thing that's been impressive, too, about Courtney and Ashley, they both have dropped about 20, 30 pounds getting in shape, and the trainers for Oklahoma said they still have so much strength and a ways to go. Higgins won't wait and missed it. A quick shot there by Aaron Higgins. And a junior off the mark, but superb from three-point distance. She has made over 220 three-point baskets in her career. Stanford by 13, one minute left and a half. 
A hot start by the Cardinals and a 19 to 4 lead before most of the fans could sit down here in the AT&T Center. Wiggins stumbled a bit, pulls up at the line and off the back iron with that jump shot. Just not falling. She is 4 out of 13 in the first half. And she's been held to 9 points. It really hasn't bothered the Cardinal too much. Ashley Paris flings it up in a miss. Terrific rebound down the lane by Rush. And a pull-up block is good by Brown. That's good effort by Oklahoma, recognizing and just opening things up in the middle for those open looks off the rebounds. Timeout, Stanford with 16 seconds left in the half to set up a shot here, leading it 43-32. to 32. They have shot 53%. And even with 17 turnovers by Stanford, Candace Wiggins picked apart Southeast Missouri's defense for 21 and an easy round one win. Then the sensational sophomore put up double digits, a 17-foot jumper. She had 34 points to lift the Cardinal to an 88-70 win over Florida State on the road to San Antonio. Cara Vanderbeer said the loss to UCLA in the Pac-10 tournament in overtime, they lost 85-76 to the Bruins, and it really made this team refocus. They, they got mad, they were angry, they had that game won. UCLA made a great comeback, sending it to overtime, but Stanford realized who needs to get the ball in whose hands, how do you handle end of game situations? And a reach in foul that will go against Oklahoma and Laura Andrews, no time off the clock there. For live stats and game recaps from all rounds of every championship, we invite you to go to NCAAsports.com. That's the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. And this is who you want the ball in whose hands, Candace Wiggins. Even though she's four for 13 in the first half, make it four for 14. And that's how the first half ends. Wiggins not shooting it well, but Stanford as a team shot over 50%. Rappahan and Smith at 25, the rest of the team just 18, but good enough for the Cardinal. Halftime hammer ready for the second half. Dave O'Brien and Hall of Famer Andy Myers with you. Beth Mowens in just a moment. It was a 9-0 run Stanford used to get out in front early, Andy. They've been off to the races since. Tara Vanderveer said, we've got to knock the shots down, and they did do that, and it helped them get the lead. They were just hitting everything from the outside. They shot. 51% from the floor, 6 of 13 from three-point range, and it was from everybody. And then defensively, they were able to really clog Courtney Paris up. She really struggled from the floor, 4 of 11. And Oklahoma, they've got to get better spacing on their offense to open things up to get the ball inside, and then they've got to continue to mix up the defense and throw Stanford off their rhythm. Our Home Depot coaching adjustment, second half underway. Stanford with it. Candace Wiggins made her first three shots, but then went one for 11 the rest of the way in the half. If she'd had a better half, Oklahoma would be on life support heading into the second 20 minutes. Stanford throws it away. And that Cardinal double team has Courtney Paris puzzled four out of 11, just eight points in the first half. You see Stanford shooting 51%. They have been out-rebounded, though, 20 to 19. This is not a position that Oklahoma is accustomed to being down by this many at halftime. They've won 19 straight games. The other thing Oklahoma, Courtney Paris does such a good job getting other players in foul trouble. She's gone to the line once. One free throw. That's all Oklahoma is. 0 for 1. She'll get to the line 7, 8 times in a game. Wiggins battling for the rebound, but out battled that time by Brittany Brown. She wins the fight. Here come the Sooners. You don't want Oklahoma to get in a shooting match from the outside if they don't have to. Just keep throwing it down low. Even though Pearson missed that, they call the jump ball. And Cherry Cole in the bench for Oklahoma cannot believe it. Let's go to Beth Mullins. Well, that was job number one for Sherry Cole's team coming out of the locker room. She wants her club to establish Courtney Paris, and she also reminded them, we lost the first four minutes of the game 17 to 4, but in the last 16 minutes, we won 28-26. She's looking for her club to continue to chip away, and on the other side, Stanford wants more of Candace Wiggins in the second half. Now, Candace Wiggins did not have a great first half with nine points, but they got an excellent first half from Brooke Smith, who had 13, six of seven shooting, six rebounds, and four assists, so she really picked up the slack in. That's why I think she's one of the best centers in 
the league right now. And even though she's kind of playing the four spot because of Kristen Newland, you know, she can play down low and she has that versatility and range to face you up. Such great moves inside. The lead back up to 14 for the number three seed, the Cardinals. A long launch, not there for Brittany Brown. One shot and out. And Stanford on the attack here. Sherry Cole was at Texas this year, and they were in the men's locker room. Rick Barnes was very good friends. Nice move by Vic Smith, showing again the ability to use that left hand. Not too many players in this game we see do that, but Rick Barnes had on his wall about talking about consecutive stops and scores in four-minute intervals, and that's what Sherry Cole will talk about in four minutes. Look at Brooke Smith in there with a pickoff. She intercepted the pass. Wiggins, boy, if they get her going, look out. Try to squeak in there and takes the contact and the foul. And Sherry Cole, she cannot believe this call because it's the same call that Courtney Paris happened on a double team. But here we're going to see Brooke Smith gets great position on Leah Rush and no weak side help because she has the ability to use that left hand. And then there she has the long arms to see the read off the player trying to dish it. Leah Rush picking up her second foul and she fouls Wiggins. Her kick out. And on the money. Goal on Wood with the basket, the three-pointer for the freshman out of Queens. And Stanford is starting the second half the way they opened up the game. 51 to 32. Sherry Cole not real happy with Lisa Jones right now. Getting right in her face looking for an explanation. 17-39 to play, maybe in the season of the Oklahoma Sooners. Timeout Oklahoma, and Sherry is spending maybe the whole timeout talking with the referee. To this beautiful city here in Texas. Oklahoma, the Sooners in big time trouble though. Stanford, 51, Oklahoma, 32. Lots of time left in the second half, but Sherry Cole is a very upset head coach. And the frustration is starting to boil over a bit. She's directing it at the referees right now. Harris inside for two. Courtney Paris, that's where it needs to start if they're going to come back and grab this win against the number three seed. But remember, Oklahoma has not lost since early January. I can go back to the 70s and seeing all the great centers that have come through women's college basketball. Courtney Paris reminds me the most of Lucia Harris, who played at Delta State and won championships and was an Olympian All-American. Welch lays it in, and here come the Sooners. After the timeout, they've struck twice. 17 minutes left in the contest. Stanford hot shooting in the game at 54%. Good pressure by Oklahoma. Smith double team trying to get out of it. Got it free. Shot clock at eight. Wrap a hand off the short rim. Oklahoma was real physical on that possession against Stanford. Courtney Paris goes right. Partially deflected by Newland. Got a hand on that one. Kristen Newland just really creates a lot of different problems for Courtney Paris. I don't think that she has seen all season long. Newland 6-5. And Courtney Paris 6-4. And those two going toe-to-toe. -to -toe and a foul away from the basketball with 16-15 remaining. Here you see Courtney Paris. Setting picks, setting picks, and then a big target. She gets down low, too. That's one thing that Cherry Cole has talked to her about. No matter how tall you are, she's got such a great base, and she's so wide to get around. Candace Wiggins just picked up her first foul, and now reaches in and steals it. Yeah, Wiggins was just laying there in no man's land, and Brown just not a good pass that time. You've got to make the defense commit to you as a passer and open things up for the post player. Can Oklahoma chip away this big, big lead? It's Wiggins in close to bank it in. Well, Wiggins is relentless. She just comes at you. Sometimes, you know, she'll make bad shots or she'll not get in a rhythm, but she continues to come at you, and her teammates trust her. She says her top inspiration in life is her late father. The former San Diego Padre, Alan Wiggins. The answer on the other end, however, by Leah Rush, who might be the key to the comeback for the Sooners. There are a lot of Oklahoma fans dying to see Monday and Oklahoma take on LSU. The winner takes on the Lady Tigers. Newland missed. Paris with a rebound. The Sooners attacking. 
And now Brown will back it out into the corner. Waiting for Courtney Paris. Here she comes. And draws contact. Newland can't believe it. Kristen Newland hit with a personal foul. 53 to 39 in this NCAA regional semifinal in San Antonio, Oklahoma, trying to chip away on Stanford. Tennessee in the final seconds of an Elite Eight matchup. Nicole Powell's 31 and 10 weren't enough to carry Stanford. Butts scored in the lane with 1.7 seconds left. The Lady Balls beat Stanford 62 to 60. Stanford also fell short against Michigan State. Liz Schimmick made a series of huge plays down the stretch. Lindsey Bowen made her only basket of the game at a critical time. Spartans beating Stanford 76-69 in the Kansas City Regional Final. Today, perhaps a much different story. Trying to move on to the Elite Eight and a Monday evening matchup on this court in San Antonio with LSU. LSU got a pretty good scare as you look at the NCAA tournament resume of the Cardinal. 14 times into the Sweet 16, this one counting in that number, national champs in 90 and 92. But Simone Augustus went down grabbing at her left leg, the lower part of her left leg, late in that win against DePaul earlier today on this court. She's all right. It was a cramp. It was a very scary moment. She said afterwards in the press conference, she's fine and good to go on Monday. Certainly LSU, I think, is going to have to play a lot better than they did today. They've struggled the last four games as far as really their timing and just the chemistry. And for them to continue on, they're going to need Simone Augustus at 100%. Going on to at the foul line to Smith, who's been so impressive in this game, Brooke Smith. The dish to Newland. Wrap a hand up top, wearing that guard against the broken nose she suffered in November. Wiggins on the baseline. That was off Rush's leg and out of bounds. Five seconds to shoot. And I thought Stanford had some open looks and they passed him up. Simone Augustus will see off this drive and it's a good drive off the baseline as she comes down off that right ankle. And you can see how it stretched a little bit. We were concerned whether it was going to be an Achilles. Off the inbounds. It's Brooke Smith getting position in an easy basket to make it 55-41. Smith with 20 points as you look at fouls with all those rebounds 19 rebounds for Sylvia in the first win today and Kyra Smith of DePaul had 20 rebounds Paris off the double team trying to pass out of it rush she was hit after she released the shot they are going to count it as three and she will go to the line Leah Rush on the second foul of Candace Wiggins. We talked in the first half how Ken, Courtney Paris is so good passing out of that double team. Leah Rush that time getting an opportunity to shoot the three. She shoots over 35, 34 percent. And that time Wiggins just really kind of a silly foul. For more on Leah Rush, let's go to Beth Mullins. Beth. Well, Leah Rush is a player that Sherry Cole calls the chameleon of this team because she can do so many things for this Oklahoma club and perhaps more than any other sooner has benefited from the arrival of Courtney Paris this year. She used to have to bang with the big bodies for 40 minutes a night and now she no longer has to do that. Sherry Cole says she's still very capable on the interior but she is much fresher now in the second half of ball games because she does not have to take all that contact. And she's playing her natural position the four. Opening up that little hook shot with the left hand, Brooke Smith who has been the story for Stanford here this afternoon in San Antonio. You can't tell me Pete Newell, Ray Meyer, they wouldn't love that move. Well, you're, you're right, too, about great feet. Brown launches and gets the three-pointer to keep the Sooners right there. Brooke Smith, by the way, 10 out of 11, 22 points, seven rebounds, and four assists. And Wiggins has not been a shot. She's five out of 15. Rappahan has that one rim out. Smith collected the rebound. Now she gets tied up as it hit the floor. And so does Brooke Smith again. Rappahan struggling a little bit from the outside. But look at this move. Good pivot feet and the step through. And a lot of people think that that is a travel. But look at the pivot foot down on the floor and gets it off like a layup. Big, big game for the junior, the 6'3 junior, 57% shooter for the year. She attributes this with her AAU coach in eighth grade to the ability of working on that, those kind of shots. Brown had an open three. Out of bounds. That one will be off Stanford. Oklahoma with 29 seconds to shoot. 13.02 left here in the second half. Remember, Stanford started on a 9 0 run. That's how they opened up the game. They were as hot as a firecracker have cooled off only a little bit since then. 
Rush running the pass inside to Paris for two. See, and that's an inside penetration by Rush. And I think that if Stanford forces Oklahoma to take those outside shots, that's going to benefit them because once you get inside and you dish off to Courtney Paris, it's tough. The inside double figures, a foul away from the basketball, but Oklahoma making a run here down 57 to 48. You knew they would. They've won 19 in a row, and they have a big part of this crowd rooting for them here in San Antonio. This is an Oklahoma team. They, they've come out on top on some close games. They were up 17 against Texas Tech in the Big 12 championship, and Marcia Sharp's team came back and made it a one-point victory for Oklahoma. As a matter of fact, great move by Sherry Cole had t-shirts made up said thank you Marsha and her team wore those t-shirts in warm-up and they all shook hands with Marsha Sharp who was retired from Texas Tech to say thank you for what she's done to the game. Wiggins with another miss. She is 5 for 16. The Oklahoma fans will not sit down. Sanchez quick pass underneath and they lose it out of bounds. It's back over to Stanford. The 2006 NCAA Women's Championship presented by Orbitz continues tomorrow afternoon in the Cleveland Regional Semis. First at noon, number three Rutgers taking on Candace Parker, the dunk machine at number two Tennessee. And then at two o'clock Eastern, it's Purdue trying to take down Ivory Latta and number one North Carolina. They look every bit the number one team in the country in Nashville. 12-14 remaining. 57 to 48 Stanford. Trying to hold on to the lead, but it's dwindled down a bit. Wiggins gives off. Back to Rappahan. Got it. That's a three. Mr. Rappahan, the senior from Lebanon, Connecticut. That's her fifth three in this game. She's five of eight. She's a big reason Stanford is number four in the country in three-point accuracy. Just under 40 percent. But close in is Courtney Paris. That's her game. Averaging 22 points and has 16 so far today. Smith backing down. Swoops in again with that hook shot, and they can't stop her. Well, you just want to stop her going right because you know how good she is on the right hand, but she's that step through move. 24 points for her. Oklahoma quickly answers. Brittany Brown. 62 to 52, Annie. I like, Dave, how Oklahoma is really trying to pick up the pace and stay with... Stanford. Gold on Wood A. The star growing up in New York. Her dad is from Nigeria. Her mom is from nearby Queens in the city of New York. And another one by Brooke Smith, who is just eating Oklahoma alive. Brooke Smith is just doing it on both ends. 26 points. Seven rebounds, four assists. Not a bad line. Rush in and out. Boy, that hook shot of Brooke Smith's absolutely deadly. She had a game and a loss to UCLA earlier this season, and she scored 26 with 17 rebounds. Gold on Rude. Can't get it. Not close. A tangle and another hold situation here with 10 and a half minutes remaining. And we have a timeout. Brooke Smith with 26. She has outplayed Courtney Paris so far today. She goes to that hook shot, and it's just about automatic. She's 12 out of 13 today. Definition is 64 to 52 lead over Oklahoma, and they have jumped on the back of the Stanford Cardinal center, Brooke Smith, because she is on fire right now with 26 points on 12 with 13 shooting. And Sherry Cole has got to be scratching her head Brooke Smith, 12 of 13 from the floor. When you're holding the top player for Stanford, Wiggins, for only 11 points in this game, 5 of 17, and you're shooting 50% Oklahoma as you think that you would have a lead. Sherry Cole wondering why Brooke Smith has hit nine consecutive shots. And who will stop her, if anybody? Golan Lude, the freshman point guard. Looking for Smith again. Feeling that hot hand. Trying to turn into a double team. Nearly threw it away. Wiggins will thread her way in, and it's blocked by Paris. It comes right to Ashley Paris, her twin. Good move by Courtney coming over to help out. 
where Dean asked for that ball and laid it in. So on command, she has 18. Oklahoma does a nice job. I like the way Courtney Paris, Ashley Paris, that they fill the lanes, that they come down, and Oklahoma gets the ball to them as a trailer. Stanford to back it out, call of play. Tara Vanderveer doing an outstanding job with the number three seed, 25 and 7 Stanford. One of the hottest teams in the country coming into the tournament, having won 12 out of 14 games into today's game. We were talking about all the rebounds, and Courtney Paris with an incredible job. She has just tied the record for the women's single season mark of 534. I mean, it's incredible. With her size, again, they've got her listed at 6'4. I honestly think she's about 6'2. But just the ability, she, it's just ingrained in her. She's around the basket all the time. She gets her hands on it. She's got great hands and her ability to make the shots. Higgins with the foul to put Wiggins at the line. She made the bowl. Well, every time Courtney sees her dad, Bubba, the all-pro star for the San Francisco 49ers in his playing day, she walks over and says, am I taller, Daddy? Am I taller than you? Do you think I can get to be 6'5 or 6'7? That's her game. Brown straight on, drains the three. Brittany Brown helping Oklahoma make its way back. 66 to 57. She has 18 points. She only averages seven a game, so it's a big one for Brittany Brown. We talked about the leadership that she has as far as distributing the ball, but also being able to score. Only the second miss by Vic Smith. I thought she was going for a Bill Walton record. Another tie up there to foul with 8.51 remaining. In the second half of this NCAA regional semifinal in San Antonio. Bill Walton, the great center for UCLA, against Memphis, only one missed one basket, scoring 44 points. They took a basket away because he said he, they, he was over the rim and he couldn't dunk at that time. I thought he just dropped it in, but I think. <laughs> yeah, well, you would see it that way, of course, as a fellow Bruin. Oh, what a remarkable performance. Come on, it was amazing. Well, he had an incredible, I remember the game vividly and all of those tips up around the rim. No wonder they took one away from him, but one of the great college basketball performances of all time. Paris at 19 points, 11 rebounds, so in line with her numbers, but misses the second end. And Oklahoma needs everything they can get right now. Well, they closed with the single digits. Smith again, pop, Scott, red hot. Rick Smith now at 28. She's actually missed two shots today, and we're trying to figure out when that happened. She's <laughs> well, been the last that two hot. possessions, she just missed that one, but the other one was early. And here's a kid only averaged 15 points in high school. Courtney Paris. Oh, there's a nice spin move. What great footwork, and then she pounds the deck with that fist. As if to say, we're not done yet. The uh, Sooners are still very much alive. Just so quick on that move and powerful. Oh. Stolen away by Harmon. Now to Brown. Brown lays it up. Missed. Higgins got it. Timeout, Stanford. Oklahoma has closed it to six. They got the crowd behind them, and they had a couple good positions. You look at the two centers in this game, Brooke Smith. We've seen her up and under move. We've seen her face up, get a body on, getting that contact, gets Paris off her. And then on the other side, she wants it. She gets a little face up, able to maneuver down there with three red jerseys on her. And Oklahoma getting a little bit of a run, and Brittany Brown, I thought, got away with a little bit of a push. Could have been an offensive foul, but good heads-up play by Aaron Higgins, miss, following up on the miss. Sister, counseling sister there. Ashley talking to Courtney. Courtney Paris with 21 and 11. Take a look at this pass. Uh, Brown just steps right into the high post, totally telegraphed, and just a good read by the 5'8 junior. You see her go in to wrap a hand, but a good follow-up by Oklahoma, not giving up on the play. What a huge basket, too, Dave, right there, coming out of that timeout for Stanford. And doing it consistently, they have scored, Oklahoma has 12 of the last 14 possessions. 
But Stanford able to answer 70 to 62. 30 points for Brooke Smith. She is 14 out of 16 shooting it. And rebounded by Rappahan. And then one thing you really get a feeling from both these teams that I've enjoyed watching all season long is that there's really no egos. You may have some star players and Candace Wiggins and, and Courtney Paris, but it's about the team. None of those players have the ego in the sense of who's going to score, who's going to do what. Look at the battle between Smith and Paris. Wiggins asking for the ball. She's doubled up, almost lost it, trying to get free, almost turned it over. Shot clock at one. Off the rim, right to Wiggins. No foul call. The Stanford bench screaming for one on Paris. Wiggins not hit, according to the officials. And now they'll huddle, and it will stay on this end with 6.41 remaining. That's where Courtney Paris is so good. I think it's a terrific block on her part. You love the aggressiveness by Stanford and Wiggins. It's almost a possession that Stanford did not play very well, but they got the rebound. And Courtney Paris staying low, fighting it out for Oklahoma. Wiggins fighting, but so are the Sooners. They've been down all day. The Cardinal wanted a call, didn't get it. It's a, an eight-point game. It's and 40 seconds remaining. Stanford wants a big lead, 19 points. That's been cut down to eight. Rush trying to cut it down a little bit more, but misfired from long range. Courtney Paris got hit in the eye. And Stanford, for one of the few times today, looking intent of course, using the clock, Wiggins off the pass from Smith, and it's out of bounds, but Brooke Smith with a terrific game, a career-high 30 points. Candace Wiggins has been off target, 5 out of 19, but she has 13 points. But just a nice pick by Brooke Smith coming off Wiggins off that pick and open things up for the drive, and, and Brooke Smith doesn't have a rebound in the second half. She hasn't needed one. Courtney Paris picking up the foul to send Wiggins to the line, where she's 83%, but... See that Brooke has missed only two shots all day in this head-to-head -head contest with Courtney Paris in Oklahoma. It's a 10-point lead as Wiggins made the pair. Rush to Courtney Paris. Try to pass through that double team, almost stolen away. Now Brown will shoot it. I just don't think Courtney Paris has seen two players like Kristen Newland and Brooke Smith with the long arms off the double team to pass up high over them. Obviously, she has seen dozens and dozens of double teams and triple teams all season long, but this has been a different matter. Wiggins, not there for her. She's taken 20 shots today and only made five. 19-game winning streak for Oklahoma. They haven't lost since January 9th, and that was a close one to Ohio State as Rush hits the deck. Leah Rush, the junior, and a native Texan. Jerry Cole's team in trouble here with five and a half minutes to go in this regional semifinal. Jillian Harmon picks up her second foul to send Rush to the line. She's a 1,000-point scorer in her career. Well, you can find the complete results from every site of the NCAA basketball tournament, as well as information on future championship sites. Go to NCAAsports.com, the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. Second effort here because of Ashley Paris on the rebound. But they give it right back on another turnover by Oklahoma. And that one has to sting the Sooners because they get within nine with the ball for a couple of seconds before the turnover. Now, Wiggins is fouled. Both teams have done a much better job in the second half as far as turnovers. Obviously, at crucial times, it's going to hurt. Brittany Brown picking up her fourth for Oklahoma. Non-shooting, so Smith to check it in. Brooke Smith has been the story with 30 points and seven rebounds. Wiggins trying to add to that story. Went strong, but another miss for her. I hate to say it, but Candace Wiggins, as great a player as she is, is keeping Oklahoma in the game. She is so active out there, and she's achieving in her activity. Because lots of times you can be active without achievement. But she's, even though she's not shooting the ball well, she's keeping other players involved. She's on the defensive end. She's being aggressive. She's making things happen. 
But if she keeps missing key shots here and Oklahoma continues to connect, Smith stumbled a bit, got it free to Newland. And the Sooners will have it here with a chance to get a little closer, but time is against them. Cardinal looked a little tired on possession to get the ball inside, but no nobody was cutting. Paris pulls her way in, but they're going to wave it off. No basket, an offensive foul on Courtney Paris. They do a good job, a one-on-one -on -one situation, getting the ball in inside pivot, and they call the contact. A little touchy. Tough call for Oklahoma. Mm. 425 remaining. Stanford in the red, Oklahoma in the white. The Cardinal with the ball, and they have led all day. Wiggins, yes, this time a three-pointer. That brings a very hopeful smile to the face of Candace Wiggins. Remember early in that first half, Stanford was just knocking down threes from all over the place. A little bit more quiet, and that has to do with Oklahoma defense. That time, Wiggins really stretches you out. Wiggins working on Rappahan. Inside, misfiring. And it's Wiggins tiptoeing that line, collecting the rebound. And see, the other thing is, when you've got those two players in there, Newland and Brook, they don't have to try and block a shot. They just put their arms straight up and making it very difficult for Courtney Paris to see. Stanford sending two, sometimes three bodies up against Courtney Paris. It's really worked. Although she is 9 for 20, 21 points today. It's gotten very, very physical. She's had Kristen Newland working on her. The 6'5 freshman has really been an unsung hero today against one of the great players in the country. Stanford leading by 12. Looking relieved and happy after her Lady Tigers, the number one seed, advanced to the Elite Eight with a victory earlier today on this court in San Antonio, a 10-point victory over DePaul. They await the winner of this one, the number three and the number two seed. Right now, number three with the upper hand. Kristen Newland has a lot to do with that. The 6'5 freshman out of Riverton, Wyoming, who's been so stout defensively on a lot of Courtney Paris's possessions. Here's your all-center team, Annie. Well, I, I like the way Yolanda Larkins from North Carolina plays. Brooke Smith has shown why she is one of the best centers, not just with her scoring, but defensively. But we've seen the different moves that she has in this game. Brown with a miss on a left-handed layup, and it's Newland battling for that rebound. The Cardinals have held Oklahoma without a field goal. There's a, a technical foul here, and that'll be on Newland. Wow. Kristen Newland teed up here. Tara Vanderveer looking on. Let's take a look at why. Well, they call it, she's upset. Hmm. Well, the ball didn't go down that much. They're saying that she showed too much emotion. I can't imagine that she swore out there. What, for flinging the ball down? Well, the ball didn't even hit the floor that hard. That's, that's, we saw it, the double technical in the LSU game. Newland with a technical. The Vanderbilt game, Vanderbilt, North Carolina, we saw a double technical. And we just, you know, I didn't think the emotions were out of hand. This game is not out of hand. Chelsea Welch, 93% at the foul line, the obvious choice for Oklahoma. But Don't you wonder a play like this, any oftentimes you see a technical foul? I mean, turning the momentum completely the other way. Absolutely. And plus the situation where they get the basketball to check it in. Well, Courtney Paris, you think as much as she has struggled, she's 9 of 20 from the floor, but 21 points and 12 rebounds, she is still someone you've got to be cautious of. Brown with it out high. Inside, now Paris. That, that was a charge. Not called, worse, though. Not, worse than what we saw before. I agree with charge. you. I agree with you. She just lowered the shoulder and went. You'd have to say inconsistent officiating here down the stretch. 77-65. I like how Oklahoma had good space when we talked about halftime. It was a one-on-one -on -one situation against Nola. Higgins, Rush with a turnaround. That's a sweet shot. Leah Rush, the junior out of Amarillo. And this is a 10-point game again with less than three minutes to play. 44% shooting for Oklahoma. They have brought Stanford down to 48% here in the second half for the game. Rappahan missed it. Rappahan so good at getting her feet set off the shot. Rush looking for a backdoor cut. Smith. It's Brooke Smith again. Of course. 
with the thefts. And another turnover here by the Sooners. That's one thing Tara Vanderveer talks about, how intelligent Rick Smith is. Blocking foul to go against the Sooners. 2.23 remaining. Brooks Smith, such an intelligent player. We talked about the 6'3 human biology major. The junior with the great hook shot. Who has made the difference in Stanford's lead and their performance today with 30 points a career high on 14 out of 16 shooting. The 2006 NCAA Women's Championship presented by Orbitz continues tonight. Albuquerque coming away at 9 Eastern. Defending champion Baylor taking on number two Maryland. Then at 11 Eastern on ESPN2, number eight Boston College setting its sights on number five Utah. Wiggins to the line here. Go back to Brooke Smith. She's out of Marion Catholic right down the street up in Northern California and ended up going to Duke. They went to the Final Four that year in 2003. They were 35 and two and then uh, she transferred. She wanted to go somewhere and try things. Duke, great academic school and said, you know, I'd like to come back home. Brittany Brown just fouled out with 18 points and four rebounds. Higgins blocked by Wiggins. Got a hand on it, it came to Harmon. And another stop here for the Cardinals. Yeah, and really a, a huge loss, I think, for Oklahoma, losing Brittany Brown. We saw her get in a couple runs and really get Oklahoma back in the game. Defensively, they miss her, and also her leadership in handling the ball. A big turnover here by the Oklahoma Sooners. Wiggins trying to get free. And fouled with 150 left. Kendra Moore got her. A total frustration you can see by Brown there, and then also a little bit by Kendra Moore. There is your power a player of the game, Brooke Smith, with 30 points, 10 of 16 from the floor, a career high points. Also on the board, seven rebounds, four assists, and really some big defensive plays. And she's had four assists, a number of key steals as well. 23 points for Wiggins. She's been outstanding at the line, where she's nine out of 10. And Wiggins with the block. And another tie up here with a minute 42 remaining. And the possession arrow will be in Stanford's favor. 80 to 67. Is there time left for Oklahoma? Well, Sherry Cole can't believe it when you got Smith only missing two shots, 14 and 16 from the floor. It's certainly something she didn't expect. But they've got to score quickly, obviously. And you go inside, and, and where's their three point shooting? Stanford has used only six people in this game. And Wiggins is six out of 22. If you'd said before the game that Candace Wiggins would have that kind of shooting day, where would Stanford be with a minute and 18 left? You might say they'd be down about 15. Smith fouled before that shot. <laughs> Ends up at half court. <laughs> and knocked almost all the way to half court. I think she could care less with the day she's had. Just spectacular. The foul on Courtney Paris, her third. And you can say, Dave, too, you talk about Wiggins as far as her struggling with her shot. Early on, though, she set the tone. She knocks some shots down. She was aggressive. And even at the end here, how she's handling the pressure, she's creating that contact. And lots of times, I think that Sherry Cole felt that her guards might have gotten in position, maybe looking for charges, per se. But Wiggins is so good at controlling the ball at the end. That's what Tara Vanderveer wants. And that's who she wants the ball in her hands. Well, no question about that. She is the All-American. Welch missed everything. The rebound underneath the Paris, and she's fouled by Newland with a minute eight to go. The winner moving on to take on LSU on Monday night here in San Antonio. Candace Wiggins believing the Cardinal will be there to take on the Lady Tigers, who advanced over to Paul earlier today with a 10-point win. LSU the number one seed as Paris can't connect. What a year for Courtney Paris, the freshman out of Piedmont, California. Breaking all sorts of Big 12 single season records. Give credit to Stanford. They really played well, had a good game plan. It's going to be sad to see Courtney Paris end in this game for a freshman year. You just want to see her continue to play because of what she does on the floor. Candace Wiggins fouled as she hits the deck quite hard there, but bounces right back up. Courtney Paris has taken the women's college game by storm. And what she's done this year, 
Now both her and her sister Ashley, both freshmen for Oklahoma. And it looks like their terrific first years at the collegiate level are about to come to an end. A minute six to go. And it's Wiggins at the line where she's nine for ten. And they have Abby Olajuwon coming in from California, another big center. Hakeem Olajuwon's daughter at 6'3", and said, you know, I can go every day against Courtney Paris, Ashley Paris, and get better. The Sooners, however, have not experienced this feeling since the early days of January, tasting a loss here, 19 consecutive wins. That is about to come to an end here as well. Works her way in and draws contact with 58 seconds to play. The Sooners, the number two seed, about to be upended by the number three seed, the Stanford Cardinal, who I think are opening some eyes around the country with this victory over a terrific Oklahoma team. The fact that a lot of people haven't had the opportunity to see them play, they, they beat Texas Tech, and they lost to Tennessee. A lot of people don't think that the Pac-10 is that strong a conference. And they, they won the Pac-10 regular season title, but they did lose to the conference tournament champs, UCLA. In overtime. In overtime. A timeout, Stanford. Tara Vanderbeer has done a wonderful job with this team, as she has so many before. About to collect the 26th win of the season. Advancing here to San Antonio on the strength of relatively easy wins over Southeast Missouri and then Florida State beat FSU by 18 points. A look back at Oklahoma and their road here with 27 in just 21 minutes. Courtney Paris passing Edwina Brown's Big 12 single season record. Boy heading to the bench in the second half, that easy win over Pepperdine, and then opposing defenses just can't hold her. She finished with 30 and 15 rebounds to lead the Sooners to an 86-70 victory over Brigham Young for a 19th consecutive win. Well, this season is coming to an end for them, but for Sherry Cole, happier days certainly about to start pretty quickly. A terrific team coming in next year. Well, they really are, and they lose two seniors. Becky Preston, who's been instrumental on this team, and Laura Andrews, the two seniors. And uh, we talked about the chemistry on this team, and, and they didn't really have a swagger, but there was such a confidence and an air of easiness about this Oklahoma team. You really felt that they were going to be in the Final Four, and they came up against a buzzsaw in Stanford, just starting out so hot. 9-0. I mean, it was 9-0 it was just like that on the scoreboard. And then they were off to the races after that. 57 seconds remaining with Wiggins at the line. And the Stanford team is a young team. 26 points for Candace Wiggins. There's a lot for the All-American because just a 622 shooting today. She does it very quietly. We talked about her ability to get to the free throw line because she creates contact not only on the inside but from the outside. And a great player and only a sophomore. Oklahoma down by 12 with 45 seconds remaining. Well, back in 2002, UConn Swin Cash had 20, but the Sooners rallied from a 15-point deficit on a layup by Stacy Dales. This was in San Antonio. Diana Tarazzi securing the Huskies' third championship in their second undefeated season with an 82-70 victory over Oklahoma. And this is the fifth time that Stanford and Oklahoma have played each other. Stanford leads it 3-2. They've won the last two meetings. Back in 2001, Sherry Cole, her team, played Stanford twice and was able to beat them. One was in the NCAA tournament. Brooke Smith to head up the other way and take some more foul shots at the line. Today, she has been three out of five so far, 31 points. Brooke Smith, our power eight player of the game. And this will be interesting, as good as Brooke Smith has played today, again, not just because of the points, but how they carry that over into the LSU game. Now she goes up against Sylvia Fowles, as does Kristen Newland at 6-5. Sylvia Fowles with 19 rebounds today against DePaul in LSU's victory to get them into the Elite Eight. They're up next. Smith continues to add to a career day with 33 points. And you've got Candace Wiggins and Simone Augustus. Oklahoma unable to make the comeback. 
They were down 19 to 4 in the early portions of the first half. They were down 19 points, the biggest lead of the day for Stanford. And they made a couple of runs, the Sooners did in the second half, but it is not to be. Hokie Chapman doing some scouting. That'll be great. You know, you play the early game. You started at 11 a.m. San Antonio time. You win that. Then you just kick back, kick back and, and do your scouting and fill in your notebook and think about what is to come on Monday night. Well, I know that I, I haven't seen a, a coach in college basketball that doesn't sit and watch film and break things down and then meets with the players and breaks it down and talks to the coaches and watches more film. So it's never an easy night. 35 points for Brooke Smith. The best scoring day of her career. Here's Courtney Paris for an easy two. That will be too little, too late for Oklahoma. Their string of 19 consecutive wins is over. Stanford with a thoroughly impressive victory knocks off the number two seed Oklahoma, 88 to 74. Brooke Smith, the star, 35 points. Candace Wiggins at 26 points. And why not smile? You've earned it, Brooke Smith. What a day. As Oklahoma is eliminated. And amidst the tears by Ashley Paris and Courtney Paris, you can see Brooke Smith is celebrating with a day of days. Only missed two shots the entire afternoon in. Well, for the Paris Twins and, and Oklahoma, they'll carry that with them next year to motivate them. And you can't say enough about Stanford as far as how they control the tempo of this game from the on-start. They scored right off the bat, and Oklahoma was on their heels from then on because Courtney Paris was double teamed and just couldn't fight her way out of it. So Stanford is moving on. They made 11 of their last 13 foul shots, by the way. And let's go to Beth Mullen standing by, Beth. All right, thank you very much. And Coach, Coach Vanderveer, congratulations on the win. I guess the first question has to be about Brooke Smith. How was she able to be so effective um, for you today offensively? You know, Brooke's a great player, and it was a great team effort. I thought our defense really won it for us. Uh, Oklahoma is an excellent team with um, fabulous uh, personnel and coaches. This is a great win for us, and we're really happy. Um, Brooke, just can, she can score. She is a, one of the smartest players I've ever coached, and I'm really happy that she had a big game uh, for our team tonight. A lot of people have been talking about what you lost last year, yeah. what you've got coming in this year. Yeah. When did this group start to believe that they could get it done and get back to the region final this year? I don't know. You know, when you have a player like Candace Wiggins and Brooke Smith, you know, they're great leaders. Um, Roz Gold and uh, Wade, our bench would do anything to help. They're talking, they're encouraging. Um, it's a great group to work with. I'm really excited for our team and uh, really happy for our players and our staff. Uh, Karen Middleton did a great job scouting them, and uh, now we just got to get ready for uh, LSU. All right, thank you very All much, right, Tara. Thank you very congratulations. Much. Let's bring in Brooke Smith right now. And Brooke, congratulations on the win. I know in the press conferences yesterday, a lot of people were asking you how you were going to stop Courtney Paris. Was that a bit of a motivating factor for you coming out today? Well, I mean, it was, she's had such a great season. She deserves all the attention and press. And she's, I mean, she's such a dominant post player. And I think Kristen Newland did a really great job against her this year. She just battled her all game, didn't give her anything easy. And I think she did an awesome job on her. What was it like for you guys on the floor those first four minutes? You really delivered that big punch. You went up 17 to 4. What was the mood like on the team? I, we were, we're just really excited to be out here. We're really excited to be playing, and um, we think we need to show the country that we're capable of playing, too. You know, not a lot of people were talking about us, so we were just excited to be out here, and I think that's what you saw. We came out and knocked a lot of shots down, and, I mean, that's what we're capable of doing, so. Do you think that tomorrow the media should start asking Sylvia Fowles how she's going to stop Brooke Smith? <laughs> I mean, we still have to stop her, too. we got another game to go, so we're just excited to be here, and we're ready for the challenge. Congratulations. Thank you.